Introducing the Stormbound Sentinel Sorcerer Tank build, where lightning meets unyielding defense. Harness the raw power of thunderstorms and summon loyal combat pets to forge an indomitable force on the front lines. Become the Guardian of Lightning, protecting your allies with electrifying resilience. Embrace the storm and reign supreme as the Stormbound Sentinel. So this is a general Sorcerer tank build and we've renamed it to fit better with the current meta. We've had to change some of the gear and things like that to make it more suitable. You can use this in all content, although you'll quite often see that Sorcerer tanks aren't highly requested for trial content and you might need to adjust your setup for your raid leader's specific needs. So why play a Sorcerer tank? So they've got great self-healing first of all. Huge healing capabilities with the Sorcerer. They've also got huge safety and survivability thanks to their damage mitigation, their panic buttons, their shields. They've got so many things they offer to keep themselves alive. They've got multiple group buffs that will help benefit group DPS. They're very fast and they've got really good maneuverability, so they're really useful in those fights where you need to move a lot and you need to run about. They have access to some really good skills that assist that. Sorcerer tanks are quite easy to play. They are quite beginner friendly. So they are a good option for players who want to get into tank and want something that's not too complicated to utilize. Some of the downsides to playing a sorcerer. So they are quite easily replaceable. In the past, you only needed one sorcerer in a group. Now you can use two thanks to one of the changes with one of the skills, one of the main skills we're going to be using on this build. Uh, so that does make them a little bit more useful, especially for trial groups. They don't have a magicka pull or chain ability. So it can be difficult to sustain the chaining of enemies and things like that if you're going to have to use silver leash uh, and one of the main sustain skills dark deal really good skill it means that the sorcerer has good sustain however it does drop your block when casting it and it does lock you out of block for just a short period of time but this can cause people to die because you won't be blocking especially if you do it at the wrong time so it requires some timing so in terms of the sorcerer's group buffs they have the exploitation passive which provides the group with minor prophecy they have a really strong skill, Regenerative Ward, that offers minor intellect and minor endurance to the group, while also giving you a huge damage shield. They do have access to a skill, Crystal Weapon, which offers armor pen to the group. It's a little bit more difficult to use than other classes. Things like the Arcanist have access to a skill which does armor pen, which does more, but it's much easier. The Sorcerer's is quite difficult, but it's still there if you need it. You've got the Storm Atronarch Ultimate, which is really, really strong because it provides the group with a, it's a full group synergy. So your whole group can get it. It gives the group major berserk, which increases DPS. And this is one of the reasons now why having two sorcerers is useful in a group because you've got the synergy cooldown to 20 seconds. This is a 10 second duration it gives to the full group. So you need two people to use this. And then finally, you've got things like lightning splash, which provides a conduit synergy, which is useful for providing that group synergy for maintaining things like Alkosh and things like that. I pretty much use the same race on all of my tank builds. This one again is a Nord for the increased resistances, the increased stamina, the ulti gain, and the max health. As I've said many times before, you can use whatever race you want, but this will be the most beneficial for your long-term progression to help reduce your incoming damage. If we look at our stats, we've got a lot of max health, we've got a lot of magicka and stamina, and we've got really, really high recovery. We've nearly at the resistance cap as well, and we've got a capability of hitting the block mitigation cap almost. So lots and lots of strength on a Sorcerer tank. Obviously, they are really strong at dealing with AoE damage. They're really good at dealing with single target damage. When it comes to dot damage though, a lot of this stuff doesn't affect that kind of damage. So you are able to get to the block mitigation cap, which is 90%. Anything higher than that doesn't do anything. You're able to mitigate 90% of the damage straight up just by blocking. And that is a really, really strong point for this particular class. Now, when it comes to dot damage though, block mitigation doesn't impact that whatsoever. That's where the Necro really starts to stand out. But in terms of dealing with single target damage, so big big single target situations in Falgrave and hard mode, let's say in, in Kind's Aegis, then this particular class would be absolutely amazing because a lot of that is single target, heavy hitting damage. The Sorcerer can mitigate that really, really well. To get our stats to these numbers, we've got 15 into Magicka, 30 into Health, and 19 into Stamina. I've put less focus into max stamina purely for the fact that I can get stamina back and stamina over time by using Dark Deal. So a really, really strong sustain skill. 
So I've put my max magicka higher so I can use my healing skills, all of my skills are magicka, so I've put my max magicka a little bit higher for that reason. And that's also why I'm using a lot of magicka recovery. On a sorcerer, using cost reduction doesn't work very well because the sorcerer has built in cost reduction. The more cost reduction you stack, the less effective it is. So because the sorcerer already has built in cost reduction, you don't want to do things like cost reduction on jewellery and whatnot because it has less of an impact. So recovery actually performs much, much better in this situation. And we're also getting near that resistance cap. We're able to do that quite easily thanks to having major and minor resolve. That's built in with the sorcerer's skills already. And then obviously with our champion points and heavy armor, it's very easy to hit that resistance cap with the divine's trait on our gear. So really, really easy. So for our consumables, we've got Azaga's Red Frothgar. Really good food because we've got Magicka Recovery, we've got Max Health. Something like Smoked Bear wouldn't be as useful because you don't really have any stamina skills. So it's not going to be that beneficial unless you're not blocking. You could also go with something like Bewitch Sugar Skills to boost your max stats. But you only do that if you're able to sustain your rotation, which is quite easy on a Sorcerer because there's not a lot of skills to cast on a Sorcerer tank. But also if you're using Harmony Jewelry, you want to boost up your max stats so that you can get full benefit of those harmony gains for the potions essence of health the tri stat potions that are going to give all of our recoveries all of our stats back really really helpful you could also opt to go with the minor heroism potions if you wanted to although those are very expensive and often not needed and now we move on to the gear the first set i've gone with is the vatashran one hand and shield the void bash set the sorcerer is one of those classes that struggles to deal with crowd control. Chaining, rooting enemies is a little bit of a problem with a sorcerer because they don't have access to their own class-based chain skill or pull skill, so they rely on Silver Leash. Silver Leash costs 3,000 plus stamina per cast. If it doesn't chain the enemy in, it doesn't refund the cost, so it's a big, big problem if you're using that skill. So we have to use Vatashran because it means we press one button and we pull everything in, so it's fantastic. So with this, we're going to get max health if you've got perfected. And for the two-piece, it will you, can, you use Power Bash. It will pull all enemies within 12 meters immediately. It will then also apply Major Maim to debuff those enemies, reducing their damage that they do by 10%. So a very, very strong set because it will pull everything. It will debuff everything all with one button. The next gear set is Saxiel Champion. Now I'm using this because my intention is to try and buff my group as much as possible and provide as many benefits. So I'm using this particular gear set because we are gonna get increased max magicka, we're gonna get minor Aegis, max stamina, another max stamina, and then when you use an ultimate ability while in combat, you and up to 11 group members within 28 meters of you, gain major force for one second per 15 ultimate spent, increasing your crit damage done by 20%. Now the reason why I'm using this on a source or a tank is because you could use this in a trial scenario, you could use this in a dungeon scenario, but the reason we use Sax Champion is we can get our ultimate back every 30 seconds. So we're going to use the Storm Atronarch ultimate to give our group Major Berserk. And we're also going to use Sax Seal Champion to give that Major Force. And we're going to be able to do this every 30 seconds. So we're just able to provide a really strong burst of damage and a, like a burst window of damage for our group every 30 seconds. Which means we're just going to be able to hammer out a lot of damage. Next we've got Arch Druid and... I'm using this because we want to add another debuff. So if we can kind of get everything going at the same time, so we use our Sax Champion to give that major force. We use our ultimate, which is giving major berserk. We then apply major vulnerability to the enemy as well, making them take 10% more damage. All of a sudden, we've got this really, really humongous window of opportunity to do that damage. So it's going to be, when you deal damage with a heavy attack, you do shock damage to the enemy, you apply major vulnerability. This is an AoE. It can be a little bit tricky to target sometimes if the enemy's moving, so you want to do it on a, an enemy that's still, that's, when they're stood still, heavy attack, proc mage of vulnerability, and this is going to be a 7 second duration and refreshable every 15 seconds. So the uptime on this isn't quite as good as turning tide, but we're trying to work in a few different gear sets here just to make this work as best as we can. The next gear set is Drake's Rush. So obviously this is for dungeon content. If you go into trial content, you would want to switch this for something like Pearlescent Ward, Crimson Oath, Claw of Yolnacrin. There are a number of different sets you might need to use for a trial scenario, but for dungeons, I've gone with Drake's Rush, and that's so we can output our ultimate more frequently to give our group those benefits more often. So with Drake's Rush, we get some really nice stat benefits, max health, double max stamina, 
When you bash an enemy, unit to three group members within 15 meters gain major heroism for 12 seconds, granting three ultimate every 1.5 seconds. So this is a group buff again. It's one of the strongest group buffs for dungeon content because it will increase your group's DPS somewhere between 4 and 6% as long as your group are dropping ultimates on cooldown. So we're going to try to do that with this build. Combining sacks, combining that Storm Atro, combining it with Drakes, we're getting a lot of group benefits out there. So for our traits and enchants, on the one-hander I'm using Decisive, that's to get our ultimate back faster. It's going to tick one extra ultimate when we gain ultimate potentially with that 27.5% chance. For the enchant, you can kind of use what you want, especially for a sorcerer tank. The only group buff benefit of a one-hander is using charged with a shock enchant to proc minor vulnerability on the enemy. We don't need that on a sorcerer because we're going to get that anyway with our skills and our things that we're using. So we don't need to do that on a sorcerer. So you can use whatever you want in terms of your enchant. So, but I have gone with an absorb magicka there just so I can use more magicka abilities. You could use absorb stamina if you're having stamina sustain issues. You can pretty much use whatever you like. On the shield, I have gone with a reinforced shield, so I've got that little bit extra on the front bar. And as we look through the rest of our gear, we've got a lot of divines all the way through. Just full divines, full tri-stat, because we don't need really need the resistances. We're, we're really close to the resistance cap already. That little bit extra would make almost no difference whatsoever. So you can add that in if you want for the extra almost 1% mitigation, but it's not going to make any difference, especially if you are blocking attacks. On the back bar, obviously, Infused Crusher must have enchant combination there because this is going to debuff the enemy. And then for the jewelry, like I mentioned earlier, Harmony is a really good sustain tool. If you are in an unorganized group, Infused would be better. But in terms of organized content, maybe you're in a dungeon group with people that you know, or you're with good players, or you're in a trial, Harmony is the far better option to go with. I also mentioned using Magicka Recovery. Cost reduction on a Sorcerer doesn't really work as good as it does on other classes because of the built-in cost reduction that a Sorcerer has. So Recovery works much, much better. You'll get a lot more benefits from going with Recovery. If you did want to go with a more optimized dungeon setup, then you could use a slightly different gear. You could use this setup that's on the screen now. For trial content, you would switch out your Drake's Rush, as I mentioned before. You could be using a range of different gear sets, Pearlescent Ward, Yolnacrun, Crimson Oath, those kinds of things would be things that you should consider if you were going to be a trial tank. So for our weapon set, we were using Void Bash. This isn't as useful on boss fights because you don't usually have to chain much stuff in on a boss. The bosses cannot be pulled in, elite enemies cannot be pulled in, so actually you can range taunt or you would have to slot Silver Leash for a boss fight, but then you could replace it with Puncturing Remedy, the master weapons, because that is going to give you a bit more healing, which you don't really need the healing on a Sorcerer, because the Sorcerer is very good, but it gives you the option of using some stamina to heal if you run out of Magicka and things like that. So you can have that for an additional heal if you need it. And that brings us on to the skills. So our first skill, Pierce Armor. It's a taunt. It debuffs the enemy with Major and Minor Breach. Very, very essential pretty much for every situation for tanking. Next, we've got Power Bash. This procs our Void Bash set. 2,100 stamina to pull everything in. And that's why we use Void Bash. So for example, if we've got six enemies that we're pulling in from range, it's going to cost 2,100 stamina to pull all six enemies in. If we use Silver Leash, it's going to cost 2,948 stamina per enemy that we chain in. So obviously that's not really that useful because we're going to be out of stamina chaining in six enemies. It doesn't work that well. And the problem is as well, if you chain an enemy and it's been stunned for whatever reason, it can't be chained and then you just waste the 3,000 stamina. When you compare that to the Dragon Knight with Unrelenting Grip, if they don't chain an enemy in with that Unrelenting Grip, the magic cost is refunded. So obviously that's not possible with a Sorcerer, which is why we go with Void Bash. The next skill is Dark Deal, and this is an, a great skill. So 2,500 Magicka, the cast time is one second. This is the downside. So because it has a cast time, it means you drop block for one second. Now the benefit to doing this is it will restore 8,160 health, You'll get 3,600 stamina instantly, and then an additional 2,400 stamina over 10 seconds. So it's good to maintain this at all times. Just keep it active. So cast it at every opportunity that you can to just get that stamina over time. And that will come in regardless of whether you're blocking or not. So if you are blocking, you're still going to get the benefit of this stamina over time. Unlike your stamina recovery, which turns off when you're blocking, this will not. You will just keep getting this, and that is really, really good. You obviously get some damage perks in there as well, which are not that essential for us as a tank, but it's nice if you are outputting a bit of damage. 
And one of the main reasons for using this skill as well is it will proc the exploitation passive. So when you cast a dark magic ability, you grant minor prophecy to you and your group, increasing spell critical rating by 1, 3, 1, 4 for 20 seconds. So if your group does need that increased spell critical, then this passive is going to be procced just by you using a sustain skill, which is very, very nice. Next, we've got the unstable clan fear, and this is a wonderful, wonderful skill. It will heal you for an absolutely huge amount. It's one of the best tank heals in the game, and it's the only downside to this is having to slot it on two bars. But one of the plus sides of having it on two bars is even when you're on your back bar, if you get hit by some damage for whatever reason, you can heal yourself. So places where I've found that to be particularly useful is when you're doing sort of a cloud rest hard mode and you've got like the plus three, you get the bar swap mechanic. So when you swap to your back bar, you've got the same strong heal on both bars. So it doesn't really make that much difference. So if you do need an emergency heal, you can heal yourself really easily, even when you've got the bar swap mechanic. So that is kind of one of the mini benefits of having it on both bars, but it does mean that you are wasting a bar slot by having to slot this pet. It's such a strong pet though, that you can't afford to not use it because for example, you've got a strong heal here, 8,160 health. It's quite a lot lower than the clan fear. The problem is that you're gonna be dropping blocks. So you're gonna be taking more damage while you're healing with this skill. Whereas you can block and use this skill and you get a huge heal. By having your pet active as well, you do get some nice passive benefits. Obviously this is one of the main ones, expert summoner, increase your max health by 8% while you have Daedric summoning ability active. So you're able to stack up your max health really, really high on a sorcerer. If you went and put all of your attribute points into health, with this passive, you'd have an absolutely humongous health pool. You can easily get over 50k health on a Sork without even trying. And then when you look at your other skills, that means that your clan fear heal is going to be increased even bigger. It means your regenerative reward shield is going to be bigger. So there is a lot of benefits to stacking health if you wanted to. I personally like to have a little bit more spread out among my other resources. And then next we've got Bound Aegis. Again, another absolutely fantastic skill. So protect yourself with the power of Oblivion, creating a suit of Daedric Mail that increases your block mitigation by 40% for five seconds and minor protection for 20 seconds, reducing your damage taken by 5%. This is one of the things that just makes the Sorcerer tank really, really, really strong. So you've got that minor protection when you cast this ability and that lasts for 20 seconds. By having this slotted, you get max magicka increased by 8%. You get minor resolve increasing your resistances permanently and then you get that block mitigation. And when it says 40% and you look at your character sheet, it only actually increases it by 20%. It's just the way that the thing works, the way that the calculation works behind the scenes. But the block mitigation caps 90%. Using this skill, you will easily get any some very, very close to the cap anyway. And this does make it really, really strong for single target damage or if you're standing in AOEs and things like that. So when you're coming up against enemies that do really hard hitting damage, this is going to be a great skill. Whenever they do a projectile, you don't need a shield really to like the warden would use shimmer and shield. You would use this bandages because it will just make you take so much less damage, but it's only when you're blocking. So things like damage over time, bleed damage, unblocked damage will not be impacted by the block mitigation benefits that you get because obviously you have to be blocking for block mitigation. So there are some situations where obviously it's not as useful and there are some situations where it's extremely useful to have this skill. The last skill I've got is Barrier, and this is just for the passive benefit of the increased Magicka recovery. We don't really use this, but by having it slotted, you unlock this Magicka Aid passive. If you've got two points in there, you get 10% increased Magicka recovery, which is obviously very useful on a tank. On the back bar, we've got Frost Clench. Really, really good skill. It's a range taunt, it costs Magicka. It's got a really long range on it, 28 meters. It's gonna be a guaranteed chilled effect on the enemy, which means it inflicts minor maim and minor brittle. By using the skill, it also procs major maim for four seconds and it will immobilize enemies as well. It does a lot of stuff. So one of the most integral skills for pretty much every tank build because it has so many, so many different statuses and effects that it does to enemies that you have to have this. And it means you're gonna take less damage as well. So we've looked at all the different things that reduce damage already. You're gonna get that minor protection, that block mitigation, those increased resistances. You apply this to the enemy and it reduces the damage that they do. The next skill, Regenerative Ward. We're gonna get an absolutely huge damage shield. So this scales off either your max health or your Magicka. And it's capped at 55% of your max health. So we are gonna get in this situation now 13k damage shield for 10 seconds and it's really really strong so it is very comparable in terms of its strength to things like igneous shield 
Igneous Shield obviously has some passive benefits and some, some sustained benefits, but this also gives recovery to you and your group. It's a group buff, so it grants minor intellect and minor endurance to you and nearby allies, increasing recovery by 15%. So it's a really strong skill because you get that huge damage shield, you proc a group buff, it is really worth using to kind of help with that survival and to provide that group buff to yourself and your group. Blockade of Frost is next. It's going to apply minor breach to enemies. If we have got them chilled, it's going to give us a damage shield. It's going to proc our weapon enchant, the infused crusher. If you maintain this on the ground 100% of the time, it will automatically just tick that enchant non-stop. And it's really, really good to do that. Obviously, we have to have the clan fear double slotted or else the pet will unsummon and you'll have to keep recasting it and summoning it, which is going to be a massive magicka cost. So we don't want to do that. So we have to slot this on both bars. And then we've got Boundless Storm. This is mainly used because it provides major resolve. So we get increased resistances. It will also give us major expedition, increased movement speed by 30%. It's really, really good. So we're able to zap around with super fast speed to get that. It will also cause electricity to nearby enemies, causing shock damage. So we're able to cause shock damage over 30 seconds as well. It will help to proc that concussion effect on enemies, which means they're going to take more damage as well. And then finally, we've got the Storm Action Arc. I've gone with the charge one for the AoE damage. It's going to cause shock damage and stun enemies for three seconds. It's going to inflict the concussion status effect on enemies as well. So that increases the amount of damage they take by 5% concussion prox minor vulnerability, which is 5% increased damage. We've already got major vulnerability from one of our gear sets. And then obviously layer that with all the other buffs that we've got. It's going to provide a big damage boost. It also grants that major berserk to nearby allies. It's a synergy. So you put it down, you provide a synergy, which increases group damage by 10%. So really, really strong. And the fact is now, Within a trial group, you will need two sorcerers for this buff. So that major berserk buff, a 12 person synergy, 10 second duration, it's got a 50% potential uptime. With this particular build, you can get it back every 30 seconds. So you just can keep dropping it every 30 seconds and providing that concussion, the major berserk, and obviously with the gear sets we're using, we're able to layer those other things on top of it. So when we look at some of the passives and alternative skills, we've got crystal weapon, which is a good skill. It's gonna provide a debuff to the enemy, it's gonna reduce their armor. The downside to this is it's quite difficult to maintain it. So you do have to kind of cast it, you then have to light attack, and then it will proc that for five seconds. It's quite a short duration. It's more difficult to maintain than a lot of other stuff. So it will require a lot of micromanagement and you've got to constantly be casting it, then light attacking. It's not easy to do, but if you're in an off tank situation, then it is something that you could potentially consider. But it is another group buff if you can sort of find a way to utilize it. Next, you've got Restraining Prison. This isn't a great immobilization, so you can use it if you wanted to, but it only affects the enemies directly in front of you. So it's not great compared to things like Choking Talons and Gripping Shards from other classes, but it's an option. I would much rather use something like Caltrops to snare the enemy instead rather than trying to root them in place with this because it's just not as effective, but it's something you can use. Now, one of the main benefits of using this is the fact that it provides major vitality which is absolutely ridiculous because it increases the healing you receive by 16%. So it means that on a sorcerer, the incoming healing potential that you've got is massive. If you go into a piece of content such as Cloud Rest where you get a huge debuff and then you can't really heal yourself very much out of that baneful mark in execute phase, but you cast this skill, you cast it at Zamaja, it's not going to immobilize the Marja, so it restores 2,512 of the Magicka cost, making this a very, very cheap skill. But then you're going to get Major Vitality for three seconds. And that's going to mean that it's very, very easy for the healers to heal you back up to full health. So it's great for situations where healers have to work hard to keep you alive. You can cast Restraint in Prison on enemies, on bosses. They don't get immobilized. It restores the cost you get a huge buff with Major Vitality. And you can maintain the uptime of that quite easily because it's almost something you can spam cast because of the Magicka Restore that you get from it. So this is a really strong skill for situations where you take a lot of damage, you need to be healed a lot, and you want to be healed easier. Obviously, when we look at the passives here, um, reduces the health, Magicka, and stamina cost of your non-core combat abilities by 6%. So as I mentioned before, this is why cost reduction on your jewelry and things like that doesn't work as well. It's not as effective on a sorcerer compared to other classes because you've already got built-in cost reduction. The more you stack up cost reduction, the less benefit it has. and it is nice though to have this because you have got some nice cost reduction just built in by being a sorcerer. When you hit an enemy with a direct dark magic ability, you heal. Obviously, this isn't super useful. You don't need to use this one. 
unless you're kind of using crystal weapon because it doesn't proc off restraining prison dark deal is cast on yourself so you do need to be using crystal weapon to get this heal next we've got persistence after blocking an attack your next health magic or stamina ability costs 15 percent less this is a crazy good passive that you've got here so you just when you're blocking and then you're casting a skill it costs 15 percent less it's a very very reliable passive because you are able to block a lot on a sorcerer thanks to dark deal and the way you're able to restore your resources and the fact that you've got cost reduction and then 15 percent less cost on abilities is just absolutely crazy good so you need to have this because it just makes your skills much much cheaper and then exploitation as we mentioned already your group buff gives minor prophecy to you and your group daedric summoning obviously we've got the abilities we're using there twilight matriarch not something that you do really need to use it's not going to give a massive heal but it will give a bit of a group heal so you can use it if you want a group heal 7741 it obviously scales more with spell damage and max magicka so it's not as effective as it is used by a magicka damage dealer or a healer but you can use it if you wanted something that's more group orientated for your passives rebate restore magicka or stamina when one of your non-ultimate daedric summoning abilities ends so obviously when you cast regenerative ward when you cast bound aegis you could get some restore back on some resources power stone reduce the cost of your ultimate by 15 percent again another cost reduction massive 15 percent reduction on your ultimate so obviously 170 cost and it's supposed to be more than that so again really really useful because it means we can proc our, our action arc faster it means we can get our group buffs faster and we can provide those benefits to our group much much quicker daedric protection increases your health and stamina recovery by 20 percent while you have a daedric summoning ability slotted so we do have a lot of these slotted so we are going to benefit from this at all times the stamina recovery obviously isn't useful if you are blocking because it's going to be switched off but for those situations where you drop your block and i do encourage you to try and drop block as much as you can and not be perma blocking and then you'll be able to benefit from that increased recovery expert summon increase your max health by eight percent as we said already when you've got your pet active massive gain to your max health storm calling there's not really a lot of great abilities here liquid lightning is a good skill if you wanted to try and get a synergy for your group if you've got an alcos user in your group you could use this to help provide that to them and it causes shock damage as well so it will assist with those concussion up times ball of lightning again not a massively useful skill but i do like to use it in certain situations for getting that increased maneuverability so cloud rest when with the boss teleports across the room boom you can hit this and it will absorb some projectile damage and it will get you there faster and it works really well in vast plus two as well let's say you're an off tank in asylum sanctorium hard mode you're coming up against lothis you use this it will absorb some of lothis's attacks and it will get you across the room faster so you can stack those mini bosses so there are some uses for it but it's very very niche in terms of your passives here capacitor increases your magic recovery by 10 percent great passive and then the other passives or damage passives which you don't need to take they are good to increase a bit of damage if you are causing some damage but they're not essential as we mentioned before when you are using void bash on ad pulls you need to slot power bash but when you're not on when you're on a boss fight you can switch this out and use something like heroic slash so that would give you the minor heroism to get increased ulti gen which again is really useful so you can cash your ultimate more frequently obviously all your passes for your one hand and shield are very useful for destruction staff crushing shock a ranged interrupt if you need it you've got weakness to elements either morph can be used in different situations but you can use that if you want to get added benefits for different situations using elemental susceptibility will help you maintain your brittle uptime a little bit by automatically proccing it every 7.5 seconds so that can be useful things like cloud rest portals and things like that. elemental drain can be useful as well so that is an option and then you've got pulsar which is an aoe ability so for ad pulls you could switch out regenerative ward and slot pulsar instead for example just for ad pulls and then switch this on for bosses and this is going to give you minor mangle minor protection it's going to apply aoe minor maim aoe minor brittle so it will have a lot of impact during ad pulls if you wanted to use that skill on these passives the first two don't use trifocus all of your skills are magicka so we don't want to be blocking with magicka as well we only really use our stamina for blocking so we don't use the trifocus passive and then we don't really need this but you can use it if you want for that increased damage the rest of them are very useful while you're using a frost staff so make sure you take those silver leash is a skill that you can use for boss fights if you need to chain in enemies and make sure you take intimidating presence with that to reduce the cost of it by 15 percent you could slot out boundless storm if you're struggling for magicka sustain and use balance but you shouldn't really need that with how good the sorcerer is at sustain 
And then the last few skills now, I've got Razor Caltrops. If you if you do want to get some crowd control in there, again, you could switch out Regenerative Reward for Adpuls and slot Razor Caltrops. That's going to apply a major breach to all enemies that stand in it. It's going to snare them, reducing their movement speed by 50%. So it does help keep everything in place that little bit easier. And then you've got Revealing Flare. We've already got access to Minor Protection. If you wanted to also stack in some Major Protection, you slot this on your bar. Obviously, you would be extremely defensive if you had a, a front bar with Bound Aegis, which gives you that minor resolve it gives you minor protection it gives you block mitigation and then if you had this as well like there isn't a really you should be very you should have an incredibly high survivability by doing both of those things so obviously if you are in different situations you might have different skill bars for an optimized dungeon setup that's on the screen now you can adjust a few little skills here and there to kind of give yourself a little bit more crowd control if you need it if you're in a trial situation you might want to go more down a buff route where you're trying to provide more buffs and debuffs for your group to do more damage so then obviously you can use a skill setup like that one so to play this build you would want a pre-buff you could use this for the pre-buff of the minor protection but you definitely want to be using your armor buff and your recovery buff and then you go into combat with your blockade and then you want to try and time everything to work together so once you've hit all your skills you wing in that heavy attack you drop your ultimate and then you give your group that huge buff of damage that huge moment there where you're going to provide all of those debuffs and those buffs to your group and then it's a case of maintaining a lot of frost clench really to keep up that minor brittle you've got lots of time to do that because like you don't have a lot of skill cast on a sword, so you can just maintain that minor brittle by casting a lot of frost clench and it's simply just a case of refreshing your skills on cooldown and then obviously if you are in a situation where you've got adds you just position yourself in the right place and then hit your void bash you can also pre-buff with Dark Deal to get the stamina over time, but you just kind of use that when you are starting to run down your stamina bar a little bit. Once you've kind of ran out of stamina, you can hit that. So as you can see, we're low on stamina. You hit your Dark Deal, and even when you're blocking, it's going to still tick stamina over time, which is really helpful. Finally, we've got Champion Points. So the main slot balls that I like to use for this are Duelist Rebuff, Enduring Resolve, and Bulwark, along with ironclad those are going to provide some additional damage reduction for aoe damage fights you can use unassailable as well but it is generally one of the least effective another really good one to have up here is in the extended might section make sure you take flawless ritual because you will want to try and proc that concussion effect more often with some of the skills that you're using so that will help to do that by increasing the chance your red champion points are quite customizable i like to use balanced vitality fortified rejuvenation and then we've got celerity for ad pulls and then you've got Wardmaster or Bracing Anchor for bosses. Now, Bracing Anchor isn't as useful on a Sorcerer because we're already able to get huge block mitigation because of the way that we're set up and the skills that the Sorcerer has access to. So that does mean that Wardmaster is a bit more effective. If you combine this with Regenerative Ward and you block, you're going to get 10% damage reduction. So a massive amount of reduced damage on a sorcerer thanks to having huge block mitigation and damage reduction potential so that is everything for my stormbound sentinel sorcerer tank build for the necron patch if you'd like to see a written guide for this it's over on thetankclub.com and the link is in the description below i hope you enjoy the build thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye for now